But West Ham lost to a Nottingham Forest team that are, are in dire need of a, a string of, of games and a string of form. Um, and we're crying out for that goal scorer, really, to finish off some of the great chances they were creating. And a first clean sheet for Forest since November in a 2 0 win over West Ham is probably just what, what they needed, really, to kind of kickstart them a little bit against the relegation threat they face. You know, obviously, we talk about the points deductions that are looming, but we, they've, they can only do what they can do on paper with the points on the board. And I think Tayo Awanyi in his return has made such a difference to Forest in this game, hasn't it, Dave? And I know you're a big fan of his style and the, what that adds to Nottingham Forest's play. But his finish, I think, was a prime example of, of how that works for Forrest and how good he is for them. Not necessarily just the finish. The, the touch was out of this world. Yeah. That was that was world class, that touch, just the way he took the ball. Um, there wasn't many better touches than that this season. I'd probably say Ollie Watkins' his, his goal against Fulham was similar in ill. But the way he just caressed that into the far corner as well, it, it, they can... It's actually, the, the potential is there for that front line of, of Forrest, isn't it, really? But when he's starting, they, they just look so much more threatening um, and they've got more cutting edge to them. But I think the promising thing for me is that hudson Adoy is almost all of a sudden starting to show signs of the player that we, we saw that he, he could be when he was obviously in his early days at Chelsea, Anthony Alanga. The amount of uh, shots on goal, I think that would be the main thing for Forrest in this particular game. The amount of shots they had on target and yeah. they only managed just to score two goals um, will probably still be a, an annoyance to them because I think this performance was deserved of, of plenty more. I think there were a couple of moments in West Ham had. I think there was a really... Um, a really vital interception from Murillo, wasn't it? On um, uh, Antonio, on, um, I think it was absolutely superb. Yeah. Like, mm. uh, not really many more superlatives we'll say about him, but I'd be surprised if, if there'll be play, there'll be clubs lined up for if they can get someone can get him for 40 50 million. I think that would be a good deal. I think that's just speaks of how good I think he can be as a player. Um, I wouldn't be surprised to see a big, a big club come in for him this summer, but. Um, yeah, you can you can see all of a sudden now that they're, they're they're building momentum as a team, the club. There's a lot of positivity around them. I think they'll pull away from that relegation zone. I don't think they'll be in trouble. Oh, that's the frustrating thing about Forest, though, isn't it? In some ways, they're so inconsistent and so stop start that you see a great performance. And then you see an absolute stinker the next week and you see the lineup changing, you see the midfield pairings changing, the defensive pairings changing. And it's that kind of lack of consistency, I think, that's really setting them back. But I think in this game, Nuno Espirito Santo made some pretty brave calls about which players to leave out, which midfield and defensive pairings to kind of put together to counteract this uh, this West Ham team. And I know they were a bit lucky, Miles, weren't they, with Calvin Phillips, double yellow card and sending off. Um, he's had a lot of bad luck this season, hasn't he? But... I think they were on top before Phillips got sent off. Mm. And I think the midfield pairings, especially with Nicolas Dominguez, I thought he was fantastic, made such a difference for them. Yeah, it's a difficult one with Forrest, isn't it? Because performances do look strong at times and they should because some of the playing staff that they have there are excellent players. I feel very vindicated. Last week, you could cut to the footage. I said that I think that front four is far better than Forrest's current league position. Yeah. And they shone this week and showed that. And I said that all it would need is Forrest's defence to click into gear and support the strength of that attacking four. And that happened this week and they got the result. So there is a lot for Forrest to be hopeful about. The problem is Dave talks about, I can see Forrest getting away from the relegation picture. We don't know what the relegation picture looks like mm. for Forrest still. It's so unknown because if they are hit with a deduction, then we can't say with any certainty that Forrest are good enough to, to counteract that. That's the real shame. And Dave also mentioned like the momentum around the club building and there being a positivity around the mm. fan base and the players. Again, that could be killed very quickly if the Premier League comes down on them harshly mm -hmm. over something that seems really petty. So it's hard to say, but when you see a performance like this, West Ham, okay, it's probably an ideal time to play West Ham because they're in such poor form, yet to win this year. But this is a side that are in Europe right now. They yeah. obviously won a European trophy last year. They're in the top half of the league. They're not easy opposition for Forrest to be playing. And you're talking about someone like Calvin Phillips, who, yeah, this was a mistake and he's maybe still finding time to settle into West Ham's midfield. But they've just brought him in from Man City. So obviously there's a player there. There is a lot of talent in that West Ham team and Forrest made them look very, very average. Yeah. And I think West Ham should be quite nervous about the fact that one team clearly had a much better attacking lineup than the other, didn't they? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> On the attacking lineup as well, I just want to go back to a one year as well and talk about... Hmm the quality he brings and he scored or assisted eight goals in 14 Premier League games this season. 
and Forrest create a lot of chances, but when he's not there, you really do feel that lack of a, of a focal point, don't you, Dave? And I think Awanyi, his, his age and his profile and his his stature and his physicality, I think he's one of those players as well they could struggle to hold on to if they if they don't stay in the league, don't you? Well, even if they do, I think he'd be targeted by a few, play, a few teams who, who would look at that profile and go, yeah, that's just what we need as well. I think there'd be a number of clubs. I think Newcastle United, they potentially could have a, a big for, uh, a big miss in their in their obviously striker department. With obviously um, Callum Wilson looks like he's going to be leaving at the end of the season. He sacked out yeah. fitness issues, and not really. I wouldn't say he's so much of a a similar player to to Orny, but uh, you could see him doing a job, couldn't you? Really, like the 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 form that he showed, particularly his last couple of years. It's very rare that you see a, that sort of player who's so physical and so powerful yet. Have got that turn of pace. He's you know for such a big guy, he's surprisingly quite agile as well. Um, so I'm a big fan of him. I, I, I love to watch him, to be honest. But oh, you know, I'm, I'm sure fan, Forest fans would love to to keep him there um, <laughs> yeah. at the club, all being well. I, I, to be honest, you mentioned about um, relegation. I th- if they can sort out that their defensive uh, situation at set pieces, I, I think they'll be fine. But they're an, they're an absolute nightmare for conceding goals from from corners and free kicks. It's happened so many times, and it was an issue when Steve Cooper was at the club as well. But there's, I think, Forest fans have had quite a few false dawns this season, haven't they? They're so frustrating, like I said, with the inconsistency. I guess the question is now, Miles. I mean, would they be able to capitalise on this in the next game and the next game and put a run together? And I think that's the, the major doubt against Nottingham Forest is that they can do that. And they've got a lot of question marks now about selection. There's a headache there for, for Nuno to, to kind of pick the, the right team for the next game. Because he just, just keeps shuffling the pack a fair bit, doesn't he? Is there a settled first 11 for Forest? Because I think if there was, they'd probably have a better idea of whether they're going to stay up or not. I think providing you keep everyone fit, I think the lineup that they went into this game with is is their yeah. strongest that I can see. I don't think there, there'd be a lot that I would change about that. I mean, obviously, they've got players that will come back into the side, where ones that have contended in, in Afghan or with injury. But generally speaking, look, there's there's too much talent in that Forest team for them to be thinking about relegation. They're a better side than Burnley, Sheffield United, yeah. Everton, Luton. They they are. They they have much better players. I think the change in coach means that obviously you've got to allow that a bit of time to settle as well. I don't know whether Nuno is necessarily someone that Forest fans are enamoured by yet, but. If he can keep them in the league whilst fighting off these charges and find his consistent eleven, then great. But it's always going to take a coach time when they come in midway through a season to get to who they think their strongest team are, isn't it? 